Hello, welcome back to another uh, uh, game of Brook City. Uh, believe it or not, um, I usually hit play and I ramble and I do whatever and then I just upload it and let you guys have it. I actually deleted 20 minutes worth of video here. Um, so I feel like I'm repeating myself because, because I am. And um, what ended up happening <laughs> was this. I... Um, I decided, okay, what are we going to do tonight? There's so many more cases and stuff to try and characters. And um, we did the velocity expansion where we, we we did the actual velocity case. And then we did the velocity criminal. And then we even did the velocity hero, which is the this uh, chance, whatever his name is, Mitchell, um, who uh, was a pretty decent cop to play. Uh, he had a lot of hunches. He had the ability to get a new hunch every time he started his turn. So I thought he was pretty neat. And then we talked about uh, Leslie Nelson, uh, was the one my cop, my son played. Uh, he only has an eight stress limit, but he has all kinds of way of, if there was anything, if you could ever have a cleric class in a, in a cops and robbers game, he was it. I mean, he uh, reduces stress a lot um, and uh, can reduce stress of other players as well. So, um, so I was trying to figure out, okay, what do we want to do tonight? And I figured let's continue the theme of just playing an expansion pack. Um, so I got an email from the brothers. It was our Kickstarter email. And, and they were saying that people were asking for uh, a Delta Keys playthrough. And I think they're going to do one. Um, but I figured I'm going to beat them to it because that's what I do. <laughs> so... Um, so I'm going to make, uh, let's do Delta Keys. So we're going to do all the expansion. So we're going to play with the Sadler Brothers, um, their characters. And we will do Anatoly Volotov, or whatever his name is, Volkov. And then here's what had me hung up. The, um, see, look at the case there. It's called Mainland Shipments. And I crap you not, there is no Mainland Shipments case anywhere to be found. So I had to, like... Um, I panicked. I thought I was missing components, um, but uh, thank you, Board Game Geek. Uh, somebody, uh, probably the brothers themselves, they have the entire contents of every expansion pack listed there, and in fact, it's helpful because I couldn't remember which characters came in which pack because, as you can see, I just mixed them all together. Um, so uh, it is no longer called Mainland Shipments. Trouble from Paradise is the one that comes with this particular expansion pack. So we will do that. Now, um, also, uh, with it comes this uh, um, this cargo uh, deck. And it has a setup. So we're going to go through that. And we're going to go through the setup for the gangster. We'll go through the setup for the case. You know how the drill works. And um, we'll do that together. But I wanted to just explain real quick how this works. Um, there was one part in the rules I was stuck on, um, and I was stuck on it while I was doing that last video. So between that and not realizing that they renamed the mainland case to this, uh, I had a lot of dead space, and that's why I deleted that last video. Uh, I just didn't want to subject you guys to it. Um, but you're learning from all the things I did off camera here, and so, um, here's the first thing. This, this deck is going to sit here and uh, every time the, uh, so this is going to sit in the criminal uh, play area and it actually has an activate section. And so the activate says, place one contraband on each card in the smuggling line, then advance it. So what you do is this, this will advance up to here and then it would get a contraband on it, which would be one of these and then eventually it's going to advance up and maybe get another one and then it'll advance up and then if it ever advances off like that then what happens is, is these two go into the docks there's actually a section on the game board called the docks and you would just put those there and then you flip this card over and it says a two on the top so if there's two in the docks then we have to do the quota section. See where it says quota? So that only happens if there's two in the docks. Well, in this case, there would be two in the docks because it came off and it had two on top of it. So, so then we would have to resolve the quota, which is going to be something bad happening to us. Or we could bust it 
which then leads to something good happening to us. And the thing is, is these cards are face down because they're just cargo. We don't know what the cart, what's inside those boxes, right? So these cards are face down. We don't know what the bad benefit is or the good benefit is. Um, so how do we get to the island? Well, there's, there's basically one way. Um, we can have a, a boat um, or we have to go to the airport and then fly there, okay? And then when we fly there, there's, um, there's a helicopter here that comes with the game. So you have this vehicle and you can ditch it to go. I mean, you basically fly to one location and then you can ditch it to even go to another one if you wanted, or you can even come back with it. Now, while you're there, if you have no vehicle, you can come into your seaplane, which lets you move between the islands. It can also bring you back uh, to the airport. So it'll take you back to the airport, okay? So these are special vehicles, they're available, there's no miniature for them, they're just virtual, meaning they let you move to there and they let you move back. And then you can move in between them as well with the seaplane, okay? All right, so, um, so while you're there, you can see that there is resistances on each location. So you can see that uh, the Valus PD there has a two, two, and one. So what you do is you basically try to make progress at each of those locations. So if I do the Valis Island, and let's say I can get past those resistances and get progress, then that is going to be enough for me to flip over the card and do a bust, okay? Now, um, each of these locations has a lot of resistances on them, so that's a problem. And um, now the game rules say, if you succeed at the location. And we all know that succeeding at a location means more than just getting progress. It means you have to get enough progress to bust the character, right? Because normally a character, for example, this one here, see on the top left corner, there, there's that three, right? That's how I know I've busted, that's a success. If I get one or two, I did not succeed at the encounter, okay? Um, so that's the, the hang up I had. Um, it didn't define what succeed meant. And I've concluded that succeed means you get at least one progress and that's it. You just need one. And here's why. It says here, if a cop successfully encounters an island target, reveal the C successfully encounters. It doesn't explain what successfully encounters means. Um, reveal the, so I'm gonna assume that you did at least one damage to this. Um, reveal the corresponding smuggling card and resolve the bust effect. Then for each progress that would have been placed on the island target, because we're not actually busting a criminal here. So if I had one progress or, um, you know, one or two, it doesn't matter. For every one that I would have had that placed on there, instead I get to discard one contraband from a card. And it doesn't have to be the card here. It could be any of these. Um, And then the card doesn't actually get discarded. So that's another important uh, point to make. <laughs> so while they're moving down the line, the gravy train here, um, they could potentially get more of these smuggling tokens on them. When there is no smuggling card at their current location, a cop may encounter a crime. So basically you can stand on the island and encounter one of your crimes, any crime, anybody's crime in fact, as if you were near it. So you don't have to travel uh, back to the mainland to be able to do this. Now, I made a comment in my other video that the Delta Keys seems impossible to play solo because you need to be on the mainland and then you need to also be there. And um, I stand by that statement because if you would have done the Velocity mission with the Delta Keys, that would have been crazy, right? Um, uh, yeah, I can resolve crimes while I'm there, which actually is pretty decent. Um, but I wouldn't have been able to, um, uh, uh, you know, do any of the stuff that requires me to gather clues or get leads, you know, here. So um, I'm pretty convinced that the Delta Keys expansion is going to require more than one character. 
So what I'm gonna try to do is we're gonna do three. And um, I very much wanna try Mallory Dawson. She was a stretch goal, by the way, based on my lookup. And so was Morgan Hall. They were both stretch goals. Uh, she seems pretty neat. The Robocop lady, I definitely like her. Um, and then Selena Gonzalez, I want to try that one as well. But um, because I'm doing the Delta Keys expansion, I really do need to do the uh, Delta Keys uh, characters. So the Sadler brothers are going to be in the game. So we've got Axel Murdoch. we got Rice or Ritz. I don't know. How do you pronounce that? Rice? Rice Murdoch. And then uh, I was told that this is one of their spouses or whatever. So, uh, so we included her. And besides, I think this might be my favorite character in the game. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to find out because I haven't played with her yet as her character. And so uh, we got to do that. Um, so let's try this. And I got my three cop cars, uh, red, red and blue. Uh, Axel uh, will be blue, rice will be red, and uh, green will go for Renee, which is actually green anyways on her character color, and Axel's blue. So, um, so we'll get them set up. And here's my idea. I'm thinking one of them's gonna go to the keys and cause some havoc there so we can see that mechanic at work. And then the other two are gonna just do whatever. I mean, they could be going to the keys, they could just stay here. But uh, with three characters comes a lot of responsibility. I'm a little nervous because as you know, especially after my Lord of the Rings playthrough, I can make some mistakes when I'm controlling too many characters. Um, but we'll try it. And uh, it's not like, I'll, I'll refund your money that you paid to watch this. How about that? Okay, so there's a lot of setups we need to get through. And uh, without further ado, let's let's get cranking here. All right, so uh, let's start with the criminal. So um, this says after we set up the criminal deck. So we'll do that next. Uh, so let's go up to the criminal here. And it's Anatoly Vokov. Place Anatoly on his suspect card. Search the criminal deck for Compromat and put it into the criminal play area. Shuffle the criminal deck and then flip this card. So let me find, here's Compromat. Oh, I almost knocked you over. Here's Compromat. And there's Anatoly himself. So let's scoot him down like that, okay? And then um, shuffle, 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 everything else. Okay, so let's see here. What does Anatoly do? Well, Anatoly is on this card. Oh yeah, we got a, where's his miniature? Oh. I think it is this one with the suit. He looks very much like the investors, which makes sense. He's wearing a suit as well. And he uses these little, these little young ladies who you don't want to mess with. So I'm gonna just grab those miniatures, get them ready. By the way, um, every box comes with its gangster and, and then of course their minions, you know, that come with them. Uh, they have like a really nice plastic, you know, container that you can put them in. It's just that these boxes are very big and bulky and these plastic containers, I mean, it'll take up your entire bookshelf. So I'm leaning towards, if you want a more elegant or maybe more efficient, and it's probably less elegant, um, you can make a baggie where you just keep the uh, the criminal deck along with the criminal miniature and his minions all together. Because this is sort of like Marvel Legendary where, you know, everybody has their little henchman that comes with them. And um, anyways, uh, 
I know it's a little off topic, but okay, let's get back to this. While Anatoly is on this card, he can only be encountered by a cop that's near the active lead, okay? While Anatoly is on the board, reduce his, his aggressive resistance by two. Bust, move Anatoly from the board to this card if able. Otherwise, Anatoly loses one influence. Okay, I wonder when you can't move him to that card. That's an interesting one. Okay, place Anatoly on his suspect card. Search the criminal deck for Compromat. Okay, we read this, so let's flip this over. If this card ever has four influence on it, we lose. If Anatoly is on the board, he gains one influence. Otherwise, each cop either discards one hunch or is blackmailed. Each time Anatoly blackmails a cop, that cop resolves the following effect. Choose the crime in your crime area that contains the most influence. Suffer one stress for each influence on that card. Oh my gosh. If you suffer no stress this way, draw a criminal card. Okay, the Compromat. A cop near an asset may place up to two of their hunches on this card to discard that asset. If Anatoly is not on the board, either discard one hunch from this card or place one asset in a random location. Then if there are three more assets on the board, discard two assets from the board and move Anatoly to a random location. Okay, so that's how he gets on the board. Okay, um, it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, we don't want him on the board, it sounds like. So um, the asset tokens, by the way, are these little suitcases. We don't really use them much, but uh, okay, so next is the, the setup for this. So after setting up the criminal deck, place this card in the criminal play area, set up the Delta Keys board, shuffle the smuggling cards, create the smuggling deck, and place it near the keys, then flip this card. And so there's the rules, and once during a turn, so um, one thing we can do is if there's, this is on the docks, we can do things to remove them from the docks here on this side, just like we could remove them on that side as well. So you could do a little bit of both. All right, so, um, sorry, my tripod's getting a little funky here. Okay, so that goes at the end, like that. All right, so um, while I'm leaning halfway over the table, let's grab our first lead. It's gonna be on L2. If we uh, get it, it's discard one influence from each card in your crime area. So pretty cool. That's a really good one. L2. Of course, it's way the bloody over there. All right. And then we do uh, the case. Trouble from Paradise. Shuffle the case deck and then flip this card. All right. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I know I said this before, but they still have a, like a, the cards have like this friction. They feel very frictiony. Um, they don't like to slide. And so it's really hard to do this kind of shuffling that I'm doing, um, or more difficult than it should be. But anyways, I think this is good enough for government work. What do you think? So uh, we'll, we shuffled, it's done. And we flip this card. At the start of their turn, a cop may discard any number of hunches. For each hunch discarded, the cop may reveal the top card of the case deck, then put each clue revealed into play, then shuffle any other revealed cards back into the case deck. During their turn, a cop near an inactive clue token may gain control of it for free. Each time a cop busts a suspect, they may place any number of clue tokens they control on the suspect's card. If a suspect card ever has all five clue tokens on it, the cops win. If there are new, no clue cards in play, each cop suffers one stress. Ooh, so we definitely want a clue card to be in play. Put each clue revealed into play. Okay, so I have to check. What does a clue, okay, this is a clue card. When encountering this clue, okay, it has progress on it. A cop may suffer one stress to reduce its resistance by two. And then once we bust it, flip it to its inactive side and remove it from the game. Okay, so the inactive side does make a difference. What does it say? A cop near an inactive token making control of it for free. Got it, got it, got it. All right, so these clues are gonna go out there. They're gonna be active. 
And then you have to basically bust the card that comes with it, right? So each clue card is going to have some kind of bust requirement. And then after you bust it, it's going to flip to inactive, and then you can pick up the clue. So then, once we have the clue, we need to bust Anatoly. And every time we bust him, uh, we get to put a clue on him. And if we ever get all five on him, we win. This is going to be challenging, I think. Uh, but, uh, because Anatoly wants to stay on his card, and he doesn't want, you know, we don't want him actually out on the board. Of course, if he's out on the board, then we can maybe bust him. Um, so let's see. When he's on the card, he can only be encountered by a cop that's near the active lead. So we have to go to where the active lead is. So if you're near this, you can bust Anatoly when he's on his card. So we may not want to pick up the lead in this game. In the previous games, the leads were, you know, you wanted them. Here, you know, the lead actually is how we, we get to, to the suspect. That's a very interesting twist on the game there. Okay, so um, I think we covered that. The smuggle deck starts exactly as I have it. You don't actually put it on the board. Uh, so that's good. Um, I'm very excited. This game has so many different variations to it. The modularity, back, let's start over. The modularity of the decks, the way the different suspects behave, the way the different cases uh, behave, I do find them very interesting. I know we're thematically going with whatever came in whatever box, but there's no reason we have to do it this way. Um, but anyways, it's... Um, uh, I just really enjoy this. Uh, I mean, am I feeling adequately challenged? Yes. I mean, I know my son and I made that one look easy, but uh, that's because I think luck was on our side. Uh, that first one was not easy. I got my, my butt handed to me. And um, I did make a few mistakes, though. Um, and I hope uh, you guys know I pointed those out. I was spending actions on places that don't need actions, like, for example, picking up the lead. Uh, also, one other clarification. Apparently, if you want to commandeer a vehicle, you have to do at least one move on a street. So you have to move to one new space on a street, and then you can commandeer a vehicle. So um, can't quite uh, just pick one up out of nowhere like we were doing in the last one. And I don't know the source. Somebody uh, wrote me, uh, put it in the comments of one of the videos, and said that they got it from Board Game Geek. I did not go and confirm it on Board Game Geek, but it makes sense, so we're gonna play it that way. Okay, got some caffeine. Last thing to do is we gotta get our cop ready. So we got Axel here. He has 10 stress. I know it's a uh, it's brown hair, but you know he's he's my bro. Alright, so uh, here we go. I am just shuffling his deck here. Friction, friction, friction. <laughs> Happening again. Oh, his, ac his action. He's the man to know. He gets to encounter with two dice. He uses the cautious approach. And then he gets to choose a cop to draw a lead. So you just get to draw a lead. That's actually, uh, that's actually quite powerful. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've played a couple games, I did not realize how powerful that is, but that is, that's amazeballs powerful there, being able to draw a lead. The, the Leslie Nelson guy just flat out heals people, removes stress. So uh, some of these guys have some pretty cool uh, abilities. All right, so he gets four cards. One, two, three, four. He declares a thumb war, and let's take a look at him. All right, so ability. Each cop may discard one stress, move one, and draw a card. All, all of them. That's, uh, that's really good. Um, each cop may either draw a lead or gain two hunches. Again, quite good. Uh, encounter. Then each cop who controls a lead may discard a stress. Okay, and we got two copies of that. So we did not get any of his tactics, unfortunately. All right, so now we go to... Mr. Rice, he looks like the more aloof one. And of course he has the reckless ability. So let me put this down so you can see it and then I'm, 
I need to get started with my shuffling here. Okay, so you can see he has 10 stress. He also is a bro. <laughs> um, he's half cocked, but look at him. His, his action, I hope you can see it. Um, he rolls three dice. He's the only one I've seen so far that rolls three dice. Everybody else rolls two. Uh, so already quite impressive. Uh, then either discard one card you control or suffer one stress. Of course the designers would make their own characters to be badass. All right, either discard one card you control. Oh, oh, that's bad. Discarding a card you control or suffer one stress. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, um, all right, now I understand why it's three dice. That's, that's a big, I, he needs a lot of ways to heal himself. Um, because discarding cards you control doesn't sound fun. All right, so, uh, here's, here's, I'm drawing his four cards right now. Screw plan A. Discard one card you control and gain one hunch. Then choose two cops to play one card each, or one cop to play two cards. He's got a lot of the discarding playing things. When this card is discarded, each cop gains one hunch, and you may exhaust one crime in your crime area. Um, during a cop's encounter targeting a crime, gain an extra die. So this guy's all about the extra dice. All right, wild card. When this card is discarded, each cop draws a card. So it's very interesting. So um, is discarded the same as, yes, it does say. It says discard one card you control. So they are using the discard keyword. That's a tactic, by the way. Reduce each resistant of a target by two. Oh, that's another tactic, so we got two of them. Watch it, potato head, move five. After moving, you and each cop near you suffers one stress. You may play one tactic card each. Ooh, then you may play or you and each cop near you. Then you may perform an action. Um, all right, well, this might be one that's nice to play at the beginning. Unfortunately, uh, Dodo Head Axel here didn't actually get a tactic to play. So, uh, <laughs> so each cop near him could suffer a stress and may play one tactic card each. Then you may perform an action after moving. So it's after moving. You and each cop near you. And it's move five. Interesting. So uh, he has to like move to a place that somebody else is at. And then uh, that might be a really hard, difficult card to play. Before moving, it would have been easier. We would have just did it right at the police station, right? All right, so here's the last one. Renee Benson only has an eight stress threshold. She gets to place a hacking token in any space on the board. Then encounter two dice, a target near that hacking token. She is also cautious. All right, so the hacking tokens. During setup, place Renee's five hacking tokens in your play area. All right, so the hacking tokens are these little things. And there's five of them. So the game didn't lie. Okay, so we'll just put these near her. All right. She's limited to the five tokens. If a game instructs you to place a hacking token and you have none left, you may first discard one from the board. So you're always going to have one. It's just that you have to remove one to get one. Okay, so when hacking tokens are discarded from the board, they are returned to your supply. Hacking tokens do not block movement, can be placed in the same space as other figures or tokens. When moving hacking tokens, treat them as figures. All right, so she has some instructions that go with her. We have her little thing where she can place a hacking token in any space on the board and then encounter any target near that hacking token. So that's the reason why I like it so much. And I should have been shuffling while I was reading. My bad. Okay, what else can we talk about here? The, um, I think we're ready to go. I think this is gonna be a challenging mission. <laughs> um, three characters might do the trick. 
which one do we send to the islands, though? Which one do we send to the Keys? I, I mean, I'm leaning towards sending Mr. Rice Murdoch over there since he's aggressive and I'm looking at the resistances over there and... Oh, interesting. Every location has one spot and the other ones, yeah, all right. It's possible to send him there. I, I don't know how how useful it's going to be, but let's see. One, two, three, four. Renee Benson declares a thumb war. And here we go. All right, so she's got a tactic. You may interact as if you were in each of your hacking token spaces. Okay, that's the interact keyword, which we've never used yet. Um, encounter a target near a hacking token. You may choose the approach. Uh, move one hacking token up to five spaces. Each cop may discard one hacking token from the board to move three and gain one hunch. Hmm. Place a hacking token in any space on the board. Then place two progress on each crime that's near that hacking token. Encounter. If the target is within five spaces of a hacking token, reduce its resistance by one. Um, okay. So one final thing I need to check before we can get rocking and rolling here. And that has to do with, um, is the Delta Keys board considered to be a location where she can place her hacking tokens? And I think I saw a comment towards that. Cops may be on foot on the island, but name not move on foot while on the Delta Keys board. You have to use aquatic or air vehicles to move between locations. By default, a cop can encounter the island target that has a trait matching the name of the island they are currently at. For example, a cop on Valis Island may encounter the Valis target. Those targets are subject to da da Oh. I know I saw it here. Come on. How am I missing this now? I'm sorry, I'm just not finding it. I swear to you, I saw somewhere that said that it's considered a location but not a main board location or something to that order or effect. How or why So my question is, is can she just put a hacking token on the island? That's what I was trying to figure out. And I just, for whatever reason, I can't find it. So, um, oh, you know what? It might be written on the board itself. Give me a second here. It's not there either. Maybe it's on the card. Let me check that.
it's not here either. I must be smoking it because uh, I thought for sure I saw it somewhere. Okay, so um, how do we play this then, folks? Do we allow hacking tokens to go onto the island or not? Um, it seems a little cheaty. It really does. I don't think... It does say you can place them anywhere. Oh, okay. I guess we can, we, we'll play it where uh, she could set up a hacking token on these islands. And uh, that makes it even more powerful, this particular character. Um, I apologize if, if this rule exists and you guys know it and uh, can point it out. Let me know. It doesn't say. So I'm going to play where we can do it. All right, so we got all three of them on uh, BCPD here. I'll stick her on this corner and these two over there. She has the green car. And then we have a red and a blue. Uh, let's see, which one's red, which one's blue? This guy's got, what's he got in his hand? A gun. That's got to be, oh, nope, that's, that's Mr. Blue here. That's Axel. All right. This is Miami Vice dude there. Okay. So, um, I think we're good. 37 minutes in for setup. So, apologies if that took too long. Um, I could, guess I could set all this stuff up off camera, but I figure... Some of the joy of this is for you guys to see how, how this plays. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop, and I'm going to just see you in two seconds. So stay awesome in between. You can handle two seconds. Everybody can be awesome for two seconds. Don't doubt yourself. <laughs> 